Aloha. Thank you for tuning in with me. December 21st, 2012, the day the Mayan calendar ended, was a monumental day for me, one of the most impactful of my life. On this day, I embodied the energy of Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent deity of Mesoamerica. One of my good friends, Steve Fly, who was there with me on that day, recommended that I read my blog that I had wrote from that day out loud. So here I go. Now, just to give you a little bit of a preface, I was in the Yucatan in Mexico. I was attending the synthesis gathering. And on the day of 2012, we were all going to the Kukulkan or Quetzalcoatl pyramid. The solstice arrived quickly. After a night of indulging in arroz con leche and chocolate, we were up bright and early to be a part of the beginning Mayan ceremonies at Chichen Itza. Elders were dressed in full regalia, smoking sacred tobacco pipe, burning sage, blessing the people with feathers, beating drums, and singing the sweet songs of our ancestors. People of every color of the rainbow had anticipated this day for years. The mark of the beginning of the new cycle. The transition from the Piscean to the Aquarian Age, or from the Iron to the Golden Age. According to the Aztec elder Mazatzin, we have 13 years from this day to get our act together. Either we will unite as one, or we will destroy each other. The idea of utopia sounds nice to me, so I vote for peace, or as Bob said, one love. The elder ceremony did not last long. They were off the temple grounds well before the vendors set up their booths and the camera waving tourists flowed in. We were blessed to be a part of this early morning ceremony. At this time, our journey began. An earthy sister approached us with chocolates filled with love and psilocybin mushrooms. The three of us opened our hearts to the fungal kingdom, sat down, held hands in prayer, and ingested the medicine of Quetzalcoatl. The three of us being myself and my two really good buddies, Kyle and Brad. As the medicine began to work, I found myself circling the main pyramid following the drumming, chanting, and dancing. If group form, groups formed, I joined in their ceremony. If there was silence, I got on my knees and prayed to Mother Earth. For the first time in my life, I understood that we are all brothers and sisters. The sun is our father, the earth our mother, and we are their children. It is our du duty to mature and take responsibility for ourselves. Help each other and take care of our mother. As the morning progressed, I found myself being called to the main ball court next to the temple of the Jaguars. Barefoot, bare-chested, feather in my hair, I made my way to the ball court. Visitors led tour by tours snapped photos. Children ran through the grass and scientists tried to make sense of the beautiful carvings and statues. I found my way to the center of the ball court where the earth opened up, revealing her precious silvery mud. Without hesitation, I began bathing in the sacred earth, connecting to all those who lived and played on this ball court. I began to feel at home, like I had lived there before. I found myself in deep prayer, filled with gratitude, and bathed in the abundance of love that surrounded me. I looked up from the mud, and my eyes filled with joy. A healthy tree fruiting bright, vibrant orange flowers like none that I had ever seen. Making my way quietly to the tree, I devised a plan to harvest a flower. With a quick swoop, I climbed the tree, snagging a flower with my teeth and dropping from the limbs before too many camera clickers could snap a picture. I was about to leave the court when I saw a precious, wise old Mayan woman. It was her flower, and she accepted it with a great pleasure and a large smile. 
The tree still stood, so I climbed back up it, this time snagging three flowers, one for each ear and one for my mouth. As I thanked the tree for her flowers, I noticed that the unconscious beings, that unconscious beings had stuffed her trunk full of plastic bottles. Disappointment quickly flowed through my veins. I picked up a bottle, looked at the crowd of people taking pictures of me, and began smacking it against my head, speaking the common language of the body that we can all relate to, and saying, wake up, this is our mother, why are we polluting her? I emptied the trunk of bottles, made my way to the trash, and was sent off with a twinkle of the eye and a gracias from the beautiful elder Mayan woman. I felt the pain of Mother Earth, and it made me want to cry. I sunk my face into the ground, prayed to her, and then was greeted by a couple of news reporters. They shoved the microphone in my face and began rolling. I simply told them how I felt sad and disappointed. It was a powerful moment as I asked humanity to wake up and to nourish the roses. The news reporters chose certain clips and interviews that made us look like a bunch of ungrounded hippies living in the clown clouds. Regardless, I do believe heaven will reign again on this planet. After being sucked dry by the camera, I ran into my two buds. They saw my sadness and tried their best to console me. I needed space, so I made my way to the south side of the pyramid. Laying face down on the earth, I apologized for all the pollution and rubbish that we had created. I felt like a bad child. At this moment, my bare leg was hit by a flapping piece of paper. I was angry at first, thinking, ah, trash. Then a voice spoke to me. That paper is for you, Michael. And I jumped up and I grabbed the rogue paper. On it read, the prophesied return of Quetzalcoatl, found after the ingestion of ethnogenic mushroom. A workshop would be taking place the following day on this topic. What? I looked back at my moccasins and a book was laying next to them. The book, The Prophesized Return of Quetzalcoatl, is written by a man named Gaia. Where in the world did it come from? I did not know. I looked around the crowd bewildered, bowing at the pyramid. My faith in humanity immediately skyrocketed to an all new high. Kyle and Brad could not explain the mysterious appearance of, of this book. So I made my way out to Michael, the creator of the synthesis gathering. He was without explanation as well. Inspired by the flow of energy, I began asking Michael if we were going to gather everyone and have a united ceremony. Of course he would have liked to, but everything was scattered. We agreed that it could be done, but someone would have to do it. And filled with divine energy, I agreed to the task. A business partner approached Michael with business matters and I was suddenly alone again. No fear. I used to wear a hat that used that slogan when I was a young boy. Now I strive to live it. Seeing the potential of a situation and a yearning for unity, I began running around the pyramid, rousing up crowds of people. Everybody, let's hold hands around the pyramid, please. At first people thought I was insane. But then certain people began saying things like, yeah, I had the same idea. I will help you. I covered the four corners, making sure to have a strong leader at each corner. The circle began to form. As I made my way to the west face, I saw Kyle and Brad holding hands. I broke through their hands. Kyle looking at me bewildered, he said, Mike, aren't you gonna be part of the circle? With a smirk, I replied, I am. Then I took off running like a wild man around the pyramid, letting out the loudest Indian cry I could. Ay, 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 One hand raised in victory, I made my way back to the south face. 
right where I was praying, was the last break in the circle. I held the hands of a small boy and an elderly lady. Then the whole circle began to move. The little boy, almost in tears, looked at me and he said, this is so beautiful. As I looked up at the sky, three birds of prey swooped through the clouds and began to circle the pyramid. The clouds broke and the sun shone on the pyramid for the first time that day. We were pulsing with love and gratitude for existence and our mother and father were happy. Kitsukoatl returns. I made it to Gaia's workshop the following day and it turns out he, was put, he had put the book on my shoes. He said he saw me in prayer and it looked as though I could benefit from the book. I could not agree more. During his workshop, he explained that indigenous tribes of Central America used ethnogenic mushrooms as a link to the divine. They fasted, prayed, and then would ingest the mushroom as the sun was setting, a symbol of entering the underworld. Then they would dance. Through ecstatic dance, they could access the spirit that became known as Kitsukoatl. Throughout the book, Gaia references many statues and, and engravi, engravings that show Kitsukoatl sprouting out of a mushroom, or shamans dancing with mushroom heads, or Kitsukoatl flying with a mushroom in hand. It is Gaia's belief that now is the time for human when humanity is going to reawaken to the potential of ingesting mushrooms in sacred ceremony to resurrect the spirit of the feathered serpent sun god, Kitilkoatl. I agree. It is time to reveal the truth. Humanity is almost ready. I'm in deep gratitude for Kyle, for Brad, for Steve, all my brothers and sisters who shared that day at the pyramid together. From the bottom of my heart, I love you all. Let us remember that we are all brothers and sisters. We do not need to destroy this planet or each other. We can live in peace. Let us let go of our warrior mentality and embrace love, compassion, and equality. Please.